Hey guys, Nathan at Duck River Honey, and today we are going to do some swarm prevention uh, through something called breaking the honey dome. And this is sort of a complex topic, so I'm going to explain more as we go because I think it's easier to explain and understand if you're actually seeing it and doing it rather than just talking about theory. Um, so we'll, we'll get more into it, but to give you some background, um, the weather conditions that we've had up till now, a few weeks ago we had 50s and 60s for a few days and lows in the 30s and I think my hives started brooding up a little bit. Um, we had some early pollen sources and things were starting to pick up. Uh, you could tell there's more activity at the hives and I knew that I was going to be in the middle of swarm prevention mode um, really quickly. And then we got rain and then we got hammered with the cold snap that everybody got across the country. We had single digit temps, we had highs in the 20s and low 30s. Uh, we had snow and ice for a week, week and a half. Well, that shut the colonies down. The, the queens stopped laying, everything went into cluster and they just slowed down. So uh, that is broken and we've gotten back into the 60s and 70s uh, this week. and the hives are picking up. You can tell from the activity at the entrances that they're really picking up. So to understand what I'm doing here today, you really need to understand my goals. Um, again, you know, I, I say this frequently, but beekeeping is a relationship between bees and humans, and therefore I've got a set of goals and the bees have got a set of goals, and those goals don't always mesh. Um, the bees' goals are really simple. Their first priority is the survival and success of the hive. And once they are a successful hive, they want to reproduce. That's their number two priority. Well, when they reproduce, you can lose up to half the workforce of the hive. Now, my goals are honey production for these hives because I want to cash flow my expansion and I want to maximize my honey production per hive. And I'll link you to some research below, and I'm sure that there's more on this, but I found a couple papers that indicated that if you double the population within a hive, the honey gathering potential or honey production potential increases by two and a half times. That means that if you've got a hive with 30,000 bees in it, and it can produce 30 pounds of honey, if you increase that population to 60,000, all of a sudden they can produce 75 pounds of honey. Now the flip side of that is also true. If you've got a population of 60,000 and you cut it to 30, your honey production goes from 75 to 30. So my hives this year are really strong. They're very populated, even this early in the season. And that means they're going to have swarming pressures. They think they can swarm. They think the, the mother colony can survive and they can go out and start another colony. So they'll want to do that. But I want my bees to stay home and make honey. So what I'm going to do today is to try to influence the bees to do that. The situation that I'm seeing in the hives is a little different than I was expecting. I, I would expect the bottom boxes to be nearly empty and the bees to have moved up. But what I found yesterday is they are brooding in the bottom box and they've got a lot of pollen stored in that bottom box. And the middle box has got brood, it's also got some honey stores, and then the top box is almost all honey. Of course, I'm using triple mediums for most of my hive setups. So that top box being completely full of honey means that the queen is limited in the amount of space that she's got to lay. So the bottom box has got a lot of pollen in it, which is compressing the brood chamber from the sides and the bottom. And then the top box has got all honey in it, so that's pushing down on the top. So the queen has got this football-shaped brood chamber in the middle of these boxes, and at this time of year, she is feeling pressure to increase her, her egg laying. So she wants to expand this brood nest, and she can't. And that can lead to swarming. So what I'm hoping to achieve through breaking the honey dome is I'm going to take a super with drawn comb and I'm going to checkerboard in drawn comb but empty comb in this top box. And that will give the queen the ability to move up into that drawn comb and expand that brood nest. And then the bees can rearrange their nest the way that they want. 
so there's a lot of ways to manage hives in the spring to try to prevent swarming. Um, bees natural impulse is to move up because they're cavity dwellers. They usually live in trees. So they start in the bottom of the cavity and they want to move up over time. Well, over winter, they will move up and eat their honey stores. And then sometimes they don't like to move back down in the spring. So they can all get up in the top of the box and they get crowded and that can induce swarming. So one way to combat that is I could take this bottom box if it were fairly empty and rotate. I could pull this one off and set it on top and that would give the bees space to, to move up. Now, that is commonly referred to as rotating boxes and it's very common to do that if you're running double deep colonies. I'm running triple mediums and when I got into my hives yesterday, I saw a little bit different situation. Um, what I was seeing is the bottom box has got a ton of pollen in it. It's also got brood. The middle box has brood and some honey and some pollen and a little bit of honey across the top. And then the top box is almost solid honey. So what I'm thinking is if I take this bottom box and move it up top, I'm gonna have brood here brood here that'll now be up here and then honey in between and i don't want that um, the honey can act as a barrier and, and this is what is called the honey dome uh, the queen doesn't like to cross all that honey in order to get to empty brood comb to start laying again so this is where breaking the honey dome comes in and this is work that was pioneered by walt wright he wrote a lot about this. There's a ton of articles on the Bee Source website that I'll link to in the description if you want to read about it. And uh, he goes a lot into the theory of it. And I'm not a scientist. I'm, I'm not into theory that much. I'm much more into practice and whether things work or not. And I've read a lot of reports from other beekeepers saying that, saying that this stuff works. So this is gonna be my, my swarm prevention attempt this year. This is the way I'm gonna manage my colonies this spring. What I'm going to do is since I've got brood here, brood here, honey here, I'm going to go ahead and add a super on top, but I'm gonna checkerboard in frames of drawn comb into this top super. And that is going to allow the queen to expand this brood nest up and start laying in this empty comb. And if she takes command of that empty comb and starts putting larvae in it, the workers will rearrange the nest to accommodate that. And once they expand that nest upward, I'll come back in a couple weeks and see what they look like. And if they have got brood farther up, I'll go ahead and add another uh, super on and try to keep them moving up. Again, my goal here is honey production. So I want the hive to be as big as possible and to keep them working so they won't swarm. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pop the top. Uh, we're gonna pull some frames out and mix and match. I'll pull a few frames of honey and maybe a little bit of brood out of the center of this box and uh, just kind of equalize the two. And one thing I'll say is our temperatures are going to be in the 50s or 60s for the next two weeks. Um, so if it was gonna be really cold, I would not disturb the colony this much, this quick. But um, I believe that we've got the temperatures to be able to do this. These girls can be a little testy and I expect that they are not going to like what I do to them today. You know, they're already at, at my face. This is how I set up most of my hives that I am starting out. 
I'll keep eight frames in the top box. This is my nuke basically, and I just move it on up. And I've got a double frame feeder here in the top. But these girls are not a starter colony anymore. And everybody's strong enough this year that I don't think I'm going to need to do stimulative feeding. So, I am going to take the feeder out and add some honeycomb in. Already getting stung on the glove. The smoker just does not want to stay lit today. had a thought here I'm gonna drop these into this box I'm gonna set this on there first because I don't want to drop my queen down into that other super and lose her and in case there is some brood in this upper box I'm gonna keep these frames pretty much together. There's a little bit of pollen up here. Easy girls, easy. I'm gonna take one more frame out of here and put in this top box. This should give them plenty of work to do. Got nine frames here. I need one more. Easy girls, easy. I'm not hurting you. They're really not very happy with me. Can't imagine why. And all I'm doing is ripping the roof off of their house. Get out of the way, girl. All right, so these girls have got some empty frames, empty brood comb, and what was this top box. 
they've got some brood, some honey, uh, some stuff to work on in this top box. They've got some foundations. So if we get into a nectar flow, then hopefully they will decide that they've got too much work to do to think about swarming. Not thrilled with that style inner cover so I'm going to replace that as I come to it and kind of the same deal here these guys have got plenty of food I don't anticipate needing to feed them this year at least not until after the honey harvest so I'm going to pull this feeder out Take a look in here. Solid honey. These guys are bad about burr comb. I don't know what it is, they've always done this. They like to store honey in between the frames. Everything breaks loose. When I open them up, I don't like that. More drawn frame there. So this hive is gonna be a little trickier because this is a double deep. Um, I bought three deep boxes from another beekeeper when I got started and experimented with double deeps, with a deep and a medium and with all mediums. And I greatly prefer all mediums because everything is interchangeable. I can take frames out of the top box and put them in a super and 
just mix and match everything. It, it's, it's super, super simple. Um, because I've got a double deep here, I don't have as many options with them as I do with my other highs. I can't put frames in here because I'd have to put another deep box on top if I wanted to checkerboard. I don't want to do that. So uh, the only thing I can really do here is a true box rotation where if they are not in this bottom box, I can move it on top, basically flip these two and then add a super on top to give them some space. But I can't pull combs up. I can't drop combs down. Um, because they're they're not interchangeable sizes. These guys are usually sort of testy. Not as bad as that other hive, but they can uh, they can get after get after me. This is actually my mite bomb hive. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I'd encourage you to go watch it. It's a pretty interesting story. I've had a few people ask me about that. And they've got one of these inner covers that I don't like too. So I'm going to replace that while I'm here. So I've had several people ask me about this hive. They had an extremely high mic count back in October. And I think I got them fixed. So they appear to be very, very strong. I was in these guys a few days ago and gave them some syrup because I thought they were a little bit light. Um, so these guys, what I'm interested in is really the bottom box. So I'm going to just jump down into this bottom box and see what is going on down there. Come on girls, get down and we'll clean these top bars up. Looks like they had drone brood going here. That means swarm season's about to start. All this burr comb and stuff, I'll, uh, I'll keep that and use it in swarm traps. It's really valuable. Try not to roll bees there, but it's pretty tight. I really just want to see what's going on down here. So, a lot of bees, no brood. Looks like we may have some brood on the next frame. I think I am going to rotate these guys. Yeah, we'll just do a straight rotation on them. So my plan with this colony is actually to divide it after the nectar flow. I want to make honey with them, but I don't like having this uh, non-interchangeable equipment. So what I want to do is hopefully make a honey crop with them. And then afterward, do mite treatments, and then divide this hive, take half of it somewhere else, set a swarm that I catch on top of it, and then turn it into a deep and a medium. 
or a deep and two mediums, something along those lines. And these guys are strong enough that I am going to give them some work to do. Hopefully now I won't have to worry about them for a while. All right guys, so I broke up the honey dome on most of my hives uh, with the exception of one. Um, I rotated the box on my double deep. So hopefully they've all got some space. I've got some work above them and they will start to sense that. Um, hopefully the queen will expand the brood nest, increase population, but I want to give them enough work over top that they just keep expanding instead of going into swarm preparation. I'm trying to jump on that early Elm should just be popping right now and providing a natural pollen source. I know that henbit and dead nettle are just coming out. So pollen is coming into the hives. That's going to kickstart things. And I believe right now is early enough to be doing this sort of thing that hopefully I can get ahead of these bees instead of being behind them. So guys, if you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up on it. That helps get the video and the channel out to other beekeepers. Um, it really does help more than you would expect. Uh, while you're at it, hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. That'll let you know when I post new videos. And in closing, I'd like to encourage you to let it bloom. If you've got dead nettle and henbit in your yard or Dutch white clover, whatever, let it bloom. Without flowers, we have no bees. Um, diversity of habitat and food sources are one of the major problems that bees are facing. So. You can have a raggedy looking yard that looks great to bees. Um, just food for thought there. Mm -hmm.